What if I told you there was a way to make the impossible possible? What? How? If the dead body were to move itself. What? The, the dead body m m moved on its own? <laughs> no! Not another... No! I don't think it has anything to do with the occult. I think what she's implying is, we thought Hifumi was dead, but perhaps in reality, he was still alive. He was... alive? So then why would the body discovery announcement play? Are you saying Hifumi wasn't carried out of the nursery? <gasps> system, but simply oh! That's why it felt like there was so many body discovery announcements. When I said, oh, that are, that's weird, but it's already played. That was the, the body announcement for Taka. Hifumi wasn't dead, so the body announcement couldn't have played for... Oh. So in reality, what I skipped over was a very crucial, imperative portion. I did. I turned a blind eye to it. And it was there the entire time. Okay, let's keep on going. But I mean, we found his body. He was dead. Perhaps he was simply playing dead. That it isn't possible. The idea of him is still alive. Is that a real possibility? Yes, it most certainly is. Let's figure out how I can make that argument. Wristwatch, equipment, blood stains, Celeste's account. We'll go to Celeste's account because it's. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office? There's a chance he was actually still alive. No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. No, that's wrong. Was the body discovery announcement that was made really intended for Hifumi? Of course it was. The announcement played right after we discovered his body. Maybe. But that was also the same time that Taka's body was found. That's right. It wasn't long after finding his body that we heard the announcement. So there's a good chance we've made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. And there was. Maybe... Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together into one. You are really defending yourself, and I pride you for it. What but... do you say, Monokuma? Any comment? Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go into too much detail. But what I can say about the body discovery announcement is that it's only broadcast when three or more people find a dead body for the first time. That didn't answer our question, man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. No, actually, that was plenty. Huh? He said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time. Which means, even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. If that's true, then why was the announcement made again later on? Huh? Later on? Exactly. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. The second body discovery announcement, the first time it played, was when we found the body in the nurse's office for and the, and the equipment room. The second time was when... Are you sure about that? Think hard and try to remember. Now you mentioned. Shoot. 
What? When both bodies were rediscovered. There we go. We heard it a second time in the repository when we rediscovered the two bodies. Ding ding dong. Body has been discovered. After a certain amount of time, which you may have used however you like, the class trial will begin. It didn't seem weird at the time, but it contradicts what Monokuma just told us, doesn't it? Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. And in reality, when the two dead bodies were rediscovered, one of them was actually being discovered for the first time. So when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, he wasn't actually dead yet. Meaning he wasn't actually found dead until we came upon him in the repository. And that's just part of it. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still alive in the nurse's office. Oh, 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 I know, I know! Because he was super good at playing dead! Bada bing, bada boom! That is the worst logic I have ever heard. But honestly, I do not think there's anything that can prove he was still alive. Yes, there is. The glasses. Okay, he cleaned his glasses. Let's take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. There is proof that just if was still alive, I have to find it and show it to everyone. His glasses. That's on there. Well, here's one thing we do know. The first time we found Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office. And then, while me and Celeste were in the bathroom, his body disappeared. And the next time we saw his body, it was in the repository. But when you compare his body before being moved and his body after being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, there was no notable difference. That is wrong. In fact, there was one clear difference between Hifumi and the nurse's office in the repository. His glasses. That fact alone proves that he was only playing dead in the beginning. Perhaps you'd like to fill the rest of us in? When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But when we found him again later in the repository, they were spotless. And I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. was a glasses cleaning cloth featuring a certain cartoon mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Hifumi's glasses clean, and the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? And whose digital camera was it? Hifumi's, of course. The character was Princess Piggles from Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess, I think. I highly doubt anyone but Hifumi would have brought something like this to school. I see your point. And the only people here who wear glasses are... I wouldn't be caught dead using a tacky piece of garbage like that. A few tissues is all I need to keep my glasses clean. Then there's no question. It belonged to Hifumi. Mm. Mm. So what you're saying is... What exactly? What I'm saying is... The blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning cloth. Even if that is true, it does not mean he wiped the blood off himself. But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner? That's a good point. And it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be alive. <coughs> then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse 
becomes possible, wouldn't you say? But then, if he was just pretending to be dead... What was with all that blood? Was it paint or something? The fridge in the nurse's office contains packs of blood for emergencies. He probably used one of those. He figured if he was gonna play dead, he should go all out. So he just dumped it everywhere! But he got crazy with it and had to wipe his glasses off when he was done. God, what an idiot! And if Hifumi was still alive at that point, the disappearance of Taka's body is easily explained. It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's corpse. I got it! It could only have been Hifumi. While we were all gathered in the nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. The door was locked? Well, after the bodies disappeared, we all went looking for them, right? Then me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. And the repository door can only be locked from the inside. Which means, when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, someone was already inside. And it could only have been Hifumi, who just finished stashing Taka's body there. He convinced us all he was dead. And when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. So, Hifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. Whoa. But that means he took part in the murders. I just can't believe it. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? There's more? Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body? Yep. Wow. You're talking about the note Hifumi had hidden away, aren't you? Hifumi actually killed somebody. That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. What? In his pants? Yes. His pants. Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. Take a look at what the note says. I found it maybe a I found a hole. Maybe we can use it to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. Ah, that's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Huh? Wait, this one's a little different. In my note it said, Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. I see. Then this note isn't the same one Hero got. It's not the same? In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hira, and that person could only have been... Taka. I got it! That's right! Taka! The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him! Hello! Over here! Objection! Objection! I don't really understand what's going on, but Hifumi had that letter, right? So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Hubby! Um, just to be clear, TikTok is Taka and Huffy is Hifumi, right? Oh, yes! Why must you ruin it every time? Man, Genocide Jack is seriously scary, but still, I can't let her get to me. There's a lot. Puffy had the note, right? Then the person it was intended for. Spotless was hammer. Happy. Spotless hammer. But remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m., I believe. The time doesn't matter. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. Right? 
Oh, the witch rocks. The witch rocks. Let's have been happy. But remember what the note said. What time did it say to meet? 6 a.m., I believe. The time doesn't matter. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. No, that's wrong. Has everything to do with him. No, there absolutely is a connection. What? what the hell are you talking about? The note said to meet at 6 a.m., which is the same time Taka was murdered. You've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room, right? Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Hmm. Well, when you put it like that. No further objections. <laughs> so then who killed Afumi? Someone used that note to trick Taka. Just the same as me. <sighs> the culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. But if they gave the note to Taka, what was Hifumi doing with it? Shut down his pants, no less. Most likely. Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead. Show us. I got it! When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi! Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note... Yup, they're from the same piece of paper. And the handwriting is the same as the Justice one. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There's only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Ifumi tried to free the note from his death grip, leaving behind only one small scrap. Did I get all that right? That means Ifumi knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Whoa. Yeah. After seeing all this, Ifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. In fact, he was behind the whole thing. In fact... He's still alive! Sorry, no. When we found him in the repository, Hifumi was truly and completely dead. The second body discovery announcement proves that. So then, who killed Hifumi? Whoever did is the mastermind, the true killer. He was killed in the repository. So he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. Which is why I think it's the left. that time, we'd all split up and we're searching for Taka's missing body. Sh so why why else would Celeste pull Hina away to the bathroom? I'm so scared. Let me move the body. Let me leave the body alone. That wouldn't happen if there was not a reason for it. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Wait, but me and Sakura were together. Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus. Who are you calling a walrus? Anyway, when they were killed bothers me too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi. A weapon? Yeah, because, I mean, according to the Monokuma file, the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. 
It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. Hell yeah, it's packed in there good and tight. He's right though. I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Those one. Those accounted for in other rooms too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Um... Then... Uh... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? The weapon that was actually used to kill Hifumi. The whole picture surrounding this case won't become clear until we figure that out. Somehow I have to find the truth. The hammer that was cleaned. Yep. What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make oh. an appearance! Shoot! What was used? Was it just maybe just it? Well, there's one. How was the culprit? A how did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make its appearance! Shoot! What was used? Was it just maybe just it? Well, there's one. How was the culprit? How did nobody Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to check out murdergear.com slash hammer time for more info. Well, one thing seems pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be one of the Justice Hammers. No, that's wrong. There we go. The murder weapon wasn't a Justice Hammer at all. No, it was something completely different. But seriously? A different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones, and even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the justice hammers used those as a basis for their design. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma file's note about the wounds being similar. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. And whoever did that is the true killer. The one Hifumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? No, but you're, here's the thing, Celeste. You're safe. You cannot be... You're eliminating another player. <sighs> it's none of those. It's none of those. It's going to be something that I have to contradict in the statements. Okay. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. 
But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. It is... No, that's wrong! Okay. Since there were two murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward benefit? The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in the scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime. And based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies by creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. Th that's just awful. How could anyone be so cruel? You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems odd. The effort made to us to convince us that two murders were made the same was this that the main characteristic this time. Kyoko must have noticed the fact that that fact at the very beginning, which is why she said not to look at it as a series of connected events, but entirely separate incidents. Kyoko is really amazing, although when you think about it, she's almost too amazing. Like it's almost unnatural how good she is at this. I understand how an accomplice could be involved, but then who was the one pulling Hifumi's string? That's problem numero uno right now. The true killer manipulated Hifumi to carry out the number of actions and in the end murdered him. In the debates up till now, the way the case has unfolded, when you can all consider that, there's really only one person who seems fit. Oh, shoot. Me? What? What are you blasting on about? I would have... I would very much like your explanation. Shoot. Okay. Now. Th then it's Celeste, who I thought it was in the first place. Okay! I should have just listened to my gut! It was Celeste. I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. A joke? I wonder. So what you are saying, then, is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. Yes. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him. Here's the thing. Throughout the whole case, though, she was very defensive. And trying to prove out every possible idiosyncrasy in every single pa or problem. Which is why I literally was going to go with her in the first place. And literally for some reason was like, oh, well, that's probably Kyoko. Because, oh. anyway. That I would go within ten feet of that shit from brain, that lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot. Uh, 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 pardon -moi. Just to be clear. There is evidence to support it. Is that so? It is. 
Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. The, well, it's true, but both of them did a lot of screaming, but I don't think that's it. I got it! The behavior they had in common has to do with the suspicious individual in the suit, doesn't it? The only ones who ever actually saw Robo-Justice firsthand were Celeste and Defoon. Shush, the adults are talking now. Sorry. As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed individual. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? I saw a shadow. Something moving around at the top of the stairs. We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood-curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Celeste, what's wrong? That was rather an intense scream for someone like you. I saw him. The strange costumed man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he had headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. Wait, what was that? They came over downstairs. It must have been Hifumi. He's in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we gotta go back. It was to get us to divide into two groups. So that we would discover both bodies at the same time? In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Then why don't we split up into two different groups? I'll lead the hunting party. This seems much more interesting. Very well. Then Makoto and Hina... You should come with me to the nurse's office. I'll leave you to capture the suspicious individual, Toko, Biaka, and Sakura. Well, if Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. <laughs> that was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? It was your way of telling him, we're on the third floor, everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead. I certainly was not expecting this. I did not imagine that Hifumi would be murdered. Celeste, you were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. I... I don't believe it! Everything... the whole thing was one big act! Hina, you were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Oh, wait. That's what I said. Wait! Then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it, but looking back, I can say that that one little slip-up was your undoing. What are you talking about? I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around and frightened. 
They. They must. We're all gonna die here. We're all gonna die, just like those guys did. I remember her saying that too, but I don't understand what's so strange about it. Guys implies two murders. Attention. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it means. She was aware of both murders the entire time. After that, Celeste, everyone's having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? Yaka said Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. But what is he alluding to? To the guys. Plural. She was never upstairs. Celeste's account. All I said was... They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious what was so strange about Celeste's comment. Shoot! All going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. Shoot! Just like those guys died. What? The, it's it. Uh. Shoot! We are going to die. Just like those guys died. Shoot! Ah. Uh. Comment. What are they looking for? What? Strange about Celeste's comment. Shoot. The sight of us standing around frightened and confused. Shoot. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those and going to die here. We are going to die here. No. What am I missing here? Shoot. All I said, they must really be enjoying the sight of us standing around frightened and confused. Shoot. Just like those guys died. No. Shoot. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes. What was so... No, that's wrong. That's right. There's no reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys died. When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Exactly. And we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. <laughs> you all have such vivid imaginations. You know that? Imaginations? You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what about the picture I took? 
how do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? It, it has to be some kind of setup, right? So let's put the suit on. And then, then she used the camera's timer to, to set up the picture. Have you so quickly forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? What could you possibly mean by that? Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered us. No, there is no other explanation. If it wasn't a picture of the suspect dragging Ifumi away, the only possibility is... It's not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous, is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. Then shut your mouth. And allow me to educate you. So the last thing she can prove that there's no way Fumi was dragging the suspect away. Is that really possible? Bullet time battle, I'm sure. No. There's so much more. This is a long trial. You dressed me up in that suit after I passed out. Then you just draped me across to Fumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy! Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. The suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight. No, that's wrong. No. Even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that because that robo-justice suit had a certain characteristic. You can't bend the, at the waist. It seems pretty obvious oversight. It's not, though. They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the weight. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. <sighs> Celeste and Hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. <laughs> well then. I suppose this is checkmate. Checkmate? <laughs> Don't make me laugh, you idiot! What do you mean, checkmate?! Celeste? Clearly! You want to cram me into your little guilty box? Well, there's one little problem. Have you already forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? Who had attacked him? His answer was quite clear, was it not? He said, and I quote, Yasuhiro. In other words, 
Yasuhiro Hagakure! Wait, but my name isn't really Yasuhiro. It's actually Taro. Your confusing statements don't make any sense. You're only making things more complicated. He did say Yasuhiro, but are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hiro? What the hell are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! Kyoko, what do you mean by that? Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. How did he refer to each of us? Shoot! Think back to how... How did he refer to each of us? I got it! That's right! Our last name! He called us all by our last names! Exactly. I know I heard him say Mr. Nayagi more than one, for example. So if Hifumi did mean to say Hiro's name, he would have said his last name, Hagakure. I'm sure it was just incidental. By chance, he just... his first name. Indecent? Don't talk. Random chance. Now isn't that a convenient explanation? No. There's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. So Hifumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? But the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. Well, no. Hold on. There's one person it could apply to, and that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. <gasps> what did you just say? To think you'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit! Come on! Enough with your idiotic blather! Yasuhiro is a loser's name! Do I look like a loser to you? Well, do I? What? I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? Silence! Make sure your ear holes are wide open and listen up! My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? <sighs> the handbook. There's where it'll come into play. Fumi was trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name, Yasuhiro. If there's one person here who might have that last name... It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? My name is... Celestia Ludenberg, God damn it! How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's the truth. And since you have no way to contradict me... No, that's wrong! That's it! The handbook! What?! Anytime you turn your handbook on... It shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Monokuma told us all about it before. So all we have to do is check her. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. That, that's an invasion of privacy. I, I refuse to cooperate. Celeste, can you please just tell us what really happened? Please, just tell us. Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Because, 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 until the game's over, you never know what might happen. Fine then. Let me settle it. Let me go over the case again, from the beginning, and shed light on all your crimes. And that'll bring everything to an...
at 1 a.m. Wait, no. Just after 6. Then this is where you watch the camera 4. And I'm rolling this hard. The shimmer is you. Before anything, the killer persuaded some. He flew me. That someone they met with was Hero. The murderous duo intended to pass Hero off as the prime suspect. So they drugged him. Not. Next, Hifumi positioned himself to make it look like Robo Justice was attacking him, while the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. They did all this just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hero. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool. And then finally, at 6 a.m., they moved into the murder phase of their plan. They called Taka to the equipment room. And that's where Hifumi killed him. The murder weapon was Justice Hammer 4, which was left there in the equipment room. The reason Hammer Number 4 was used was to create confusion about the order of the crime. So, next they falsified two more assault incidents. For these attacks, the first fake incident was the there. The killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1 and the robo-justice pictures they'd taken. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack store. The second fake incident was this time, they planted Justice Hammer 2, and an injured he flew. With these two incidents, the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our mind that the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. We fell right into their trap. Making sure there's nothing that would else that would equate now. The killer is you. So for the first there, they want the sec this time with these that the sub we felt. While we did that, we left Hifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly took a blood and turned the room and he let out a scream to drop meanwhile the other group that had so when we heard the body dis we let the nurse he simply got up when we learned his body had disappeared and once again he wrapped that expl But e their plan and they did it using an ordinate that should cover it. <laughs> Celeste, sorry, you lose. I... I lost? Where? 
then was the last time I was forced to utter such words. They hang heavy around my neck. Then you admit it? You're the killer? <laughs> Listen to you, trying to take charge, as if you're my private instructor. I, Celestia Ludenberg. Actually, no, Taiko Yasuhiro is fine. Taiko? So, you finally accepted it. I'm the kind of person, once I've lost, I don't like things to drag on. Interesting. I don't think I did very well this time, to be honest. I disagree with that rank entirely. Okay, Monokuma. I'm ready to begin. Or, no, I suppose this is the end. Isn't it? Hmm. It is indeed the moment we've all been... If you would... Please locate your lever and cast your vote. And when the votes are tallied, who will become the blackened? Will you make the right choice or... Yeah, I can't pause. Basically, it's a formality at this point. Once you again, you were totally correct. The black in this time, the true killer who devised the whole stinking scheme was Celeste Lundberg, or more precisely, Teiko Yashihiro. Honestly, I lost. Well, that sucks. I guess I'm trying to work with someone who wants to mistake who was a mistake after all. If Umi's ineptitude was beyond my calculations, I knew it. so you really did approach Fumi with this plan. But how'd you get him to agree? Can't imagine he would have happily agreed to commit murder. Hmm. I'm sure he realized. On her specialty, lying. <laughs> My specialty? Don't make me laugh. I didn't have to lie to get him to agree. Well then, did you use, you know? <sighs> I know. You'd, I knew you'd figure it out, Kyoko. You're absolutely right. To get here for me to act as my accomplice, mm -hmm. I used her. For everyone who's still left, I'll avoid mentioning it by name, but it was the one thing Hifumi and Taka were both super into. Does she mean... She was talking about alter ego. Say what? Whoa, 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 what are you talking Just about? Second. Don't interrupt. We're in the middle of a very important conversation here. <laughs> I'm totally out of the loop as usual. In How sad. Words, then you are the one who stole it. Indeed. That's right. I see. And that's how you used it to drag Fumi into the plan you'd come up with. <laughs> right again. Last night after we had had our meeting, how about how it disappeared? I had paid Fumi a little visit. Um, what are you doing here? Actually, I was hoping I could talk to you alone. It is about what was stolen, and I know who did it. What? Are you okay with it was Taka. He stole it. So then. And I have proof. Would you like to see it? As it turned out, I found a use for the digital camera. I had taken upon you-know-what Taka's room earlier to take pictures of it there. I deleted the picture as soon as I had shown it, of course. Damnation! Guards was him. How did he do it? He was, she was supposed to yell if either of us got close to her. <sighs> you are correct, which is why Taka forced me to steal it. As for me, Please forgive me. He he threatened me. Oh, oh. He did. As for me, he came to my room last night and unannounced, and then it was hard for me to even say. He abused me. What? <sighs> and he he took pictures. He said, if I don't, do not do as he asked, he would show them to everyone. So I had no choice. Damnation. That's a crime, an absolute crime. He, I mean, I knew he'd gone a little crazy, but I never imagined he would go up that far. <laughs> it was amazing how completely he bought it. Um, he can't, can't express how enjoyable that was. <laughs> I'm about to say something I've never said before in my life. I'm going to kill him. I'm gonna, going to kill him. Wait, please, before you go. If you will, be playing right into his hands. Hmm? Actually, Taka is planning to use her to escape. And he has made you his target. What? Escape? You, don't you mean <sighs> Taka is going to try and kill you? <laughs> Indeed. And all he can keep her, her and all so he can keep her to himself. <laughs> that bastard. Bastard, 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 bastard. 
Can we allow him to continue with his barbaric acts? Absolutely not. How can I? She, she, I, I have I to save her. Then, would you help? Would you like to join me? So, it, it just so happens I have come up with a plan. <laughs> I have devised a way to reclaim what he has done in an escape of this dreadful school. <laughs> with that, it is complete. Hmm? Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> Hofumi agreed without second thought. Hmm. The effect that item had on him was remarkable. The power of love. Even love, as twisted as that, can still drive people mad, it would seem. Uh, um, you disgust me. I, I have another question for you. What strange costume of Fumi's creation? Indeed. Yeah, it was a real pain in the butt, too, but all I asked him to do was make something to hide the face or hide the face in general body size. I had no idea he'd make something like that, but it was my fault for making him in the first place. But... So why did you decide to make me the suspect? Mm. Because you're stupid. Huh? That's it. Let's and in that regard, I made the right choice. So I'm glad your stupidity surpassed my every expectation. The life, life must have been tough on your parents, though. I feel like I could cry. But when you're explaining your plan to Fumi, how did you explain the part where about him playing dead? What she's thinking is, what was Hafumi supposed to do after that, assuming you had actually let him live? Are you okay with this? That's simple. After he did his part, he pretended to be dead. And once ever someone showed up, I told him, that he'd be seriously wounded. Or told him that he'd to say he'd be seriously wounded and he was on the verge of death. But he barely held on. Hmm. But he barely he really believed that? <laughs> well, of course. That wasn't all that was there all there, was it? As I explained to Hifumi, the plan was while you were all questioning him about what had happened to him, I was gonna murder someone else. At that point, Hifumi would have had an alibi, so nobody could doubt him. I even told him that, and he believed it. All that seems very straightforward, stereotypical. I just matched the lie to the level of the opponent. In fact, Hifumi ate it up. He believed in the lie wholeheartedly, right up until the moment of his death. So in the end. So you'd planned on killing him all along. <laughs> but of course, there would have been no point to my plan if the one who pretended to be dead, in fact, did not end up dead himself. What the heck? How? How can human life mean so little to you? Well, that is a not issue. I simply did everything in my power to win. Don't be mean. No. You sound like Byakia. No, he deserves his pleasure from the thrill of the hunt. In that aspect, we are nothing alike. Why? Then, why did you make things go this far? What is this really, just for money? Hmm. Are you talking about the $10 million Madakuma offered us? That is a lot of money. This is true. Yeah. It is not all there is to it, though. From the moment our new life began, my only thought had been to what? escape. But all along, you've been saying how we have to accept living here. Hey, Obviously, bitch. that was a lie. <laughs> I couldn't take it. I hated it from day one. More than anyone, anyone, anyone else in here. I wanted to get out every day. It was fresh torture. And so you want to know why, huh? Because I had a dream. And accepting a life here would have meant nothing less than giving up on my dream forever. And there was no way I could do that. In an underground world of gambling, I risked my life to make a metaphorical killing. And it was that for a dream. And that, what was that dream of yours? To live in the European castle. A castle. And to gather handsome men from all over the world to serve as my butler slash bodyguards. I was going to make them dress up like vampires to satisfy my every need. Once I obtained that, I would be created perfectly aesthetic, a world of decimates. Living the rest of my life as the only dream I had and my only goal. That was the life that was all about. Or that was the life I was all about. <sighs> Combined with my own winnings, Monokuma's $10 million, and I would have made my dream a reality right on the edge but unfortunately my dream has been scattered shattered into the wind still i have no regrets i pursued my dream until the end so why would i you should sound so passionate but you were really able to kill your own oh. friends for it are you asking me if i to feel guilty that's a pointless endeavor thinking i think nothing of sacrificing others for my own ends i feel nothing Do you understand? that all there is to me what that's what makes me complete <laughs> hmm it isn't terrifying how different our values are there's simply no room for understanding what? That is what we've been saying, and plus, how could you be so calm? Don't you realize you're about to die? Why aren't you scared? <laughs> My ability to lie is unrivaled, and I take pride in that. There's, it is not just other people. I can even fool my own emotions. The con conscious deserves the unconscious, deceives the unconscious. That's why you're not scared. Yes, That's indeed. right. I don't fear death. Kill me however you like. <sighs> but you know, if I could be reincarnated, if I have a choice, then I think I would come back as Marie Antoinette. You just get executed again. 
huh? <laughs> Celeste smiled then. And as she did, it looked like a poor effort to force it, but she claimed that she could feel her own feelings. But the statement itself must have been her final lie. And the weak fake smile is what betrayed her. Kills, All done. Kills. All okay, time to get rolling the block and disturb the peace. Pay the price for the ride. Now I that I prepared a very special punishment. Let's give it everything we've got. I guess I'll let Kyoko hold on to this. What? Will it really give you the hope you're looking for? I can't say I ever saw it that way. Which is why, actually, it's not important. Well then, take care. Perhaps we'll meet again in another life. The burning of Varel's witch. I hate to say it, but it's kind of a pretty death. Pretty miraculous, wasn't it? It's over. The third execution is over. Celeste's death is over. Celeste killed my friends and I can't pity her, but I can also deny it at one point I considered her a friend too. And for him, just come along in. Isn't it just awful? Someone couldn't cut free from her regrets of the outside world and more people had to die. You guys are still young. You need a place to more value for one of your lives. You Jeez, and here I thought I was going to pass the torch of hope to the next generation. What do I care about hope? I'll throw it in the trash if you can make it let me out of here. All, all your embodiment of hope, whether you like it or not, is my destiny to knock you down one by one. It is sad, yes it is, but the reality is it cannot be avoided. Don't talk like it is, you're not responsible. How long are you going to make us keep going through this, and what do you want from us? God, I am so sick of people asking me that. Give it a rest already. Mm. So anyway, Kyoko, did I see you got some kind of key type object from Celeste? Hey, hey. So uh, what's the deal with that? Well, what? Huh? What's the matter? So then. I'll answer your question if you answer mine. Mm. What did you do? What did you do to me? What? Hey. Answer me. What did you do to my body? Ooh, how exciting. Oh, oh man. Oh jeez. Oh man. Oh jeez. What did? What do you mean by that? What did I do? What did I do? I have no idea. I don't think I know anything about it. Um. What was that just now? The mastermind did something to Kyoko's body. What does that mean? Hello. Okay, things are getting kind of awkward, so I think it's about time to get out of here. Well? Meanwhile, you guys are enjoying your school life. If you get lonely, give me a shout. And not that I'll do anything about it, of course. See well, I'll see you later. Monokama just here leaving his all depressed and despair. Although it wasn't all despair, there was one small hope. Hey, Kyoko. Monokuma already mentioned it, but what is that key Celeste gave you? Most likely, the key to one of the dressing room lockers. What? So that means Celeste probably hid it in there. I suppose it's the easiest to miss what's right beneath your nose. Well then, we'd better go check. Good idea. We left the courtroom and into the dressing room. As we approached the dressing room, Kyoko left us back an aide. I'm going to go alone from here. Everyone else head to the dining hall. I'll check in with you later. What exactly are you going to do alone? So... Do you even have to ask? As she spoke, she glanced quickly at the surveillance cameras. That's not what I mean, but why you... 
there's still a risk of a spy, you know. Then I'll go too. What? You? Please, let me go. Standing here arguing is not gonna is gonna draw more attention to us. Huh, do whatever you want. Thank you, Yakia. Well, well then it's up to you now. Yo. I'm going to stay in the dining hall, okay? Huh? Makoto and Kyoko are gonna go together. <laughs> huh, does it mean that they think it means? Okay. Good luck, Makoto. Girls like her are totally push total pushovers. You when you show a little backbone. I tried to forget what Hina said. Everyone headed to the dining hall, leaving me and Kyoko alone. Shall we go? Shall we go? Yeah. So then. We need to get into the locker. Kyoko took the key and Celeste given her unlocked the unlocked the locker. And the locker swung open, we saw. All three you go. Good morning. Hey, it's been a while, hasn't it? It's a think of this. I never th heard Kyoko sound so relieved. It was like I was speaking for, she was speaking from the bottom of her heart. I did just what Celeste asked. I didn't say a word. I stayed quiet the entire time. Oh, and I think I might be able to open the last set of files soon. Maybe it's released tomorrow. I'm going to do my best, so please wait a little, a little, a little longer. So we can now officially say the case is closed. As far as the end is concerned, I'm sure. But can we take a second? Since we have this opportunity, I, I want you to be honest with me. Kiko, please tell me what you're trying to do or what you are trying to do all on your own here at the school. Mm. Is that what you wanted to come here with me for? However, Regardless, I am not... That's not something for you. You need, you need to know right now. I don't need to know. What makes me even more worried? What? Worried? Like, what happened during the investigation this time? You disappeared, and we didn't see you again. Without warning, without explanation, what did you do that? Indeed. It is only natural for you to think that I am the mastermind spy, right? And you too? No. I believe in you. What? You believe in me? It isn't obvious. People believe th in their friends, right? So that's why I want you to tell me. And I want you to believe me too, because we're friends. I understand. That's true. Then maybe I can believe you. Just a little bit more. Then? That's fine. Fine, I'll tell you. I'll tell you a why I've been disappearing and where I've been going. You see? What I heard from Kyoko then was, well, frankly, it kind of blew my mind. Right after I told Kyoko I believe in her, she told me a story then was that was almost unbelievable. I decided that I had to confirm what she had told me with my own two eyes, so I waited in the nighttime to come, and then when I did, I went into action. Correct. The boys' bathroom on the second floor doesn't have a surveillance camera to monitor it. And there's a strange closet in there, way in the back. She said there was a strange closet in the back of the boys' bathroom, but could Kyoko have been right about this? We'll find that out in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.